Hey everybody, my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and alexmercedcoder.work. And what I wanted to do today was talk about four programming paradigms. So there's sort of four main categories that programming languages and programming sort of methodology kind of falls into. I wasn't really familiar with it when I first started learning programming. I just thought everything was object-oriented programming. But let me give you a brief overview of these. Um, and I think you'll find this kind of interesting. I sure did. So, I mean, a lot of the times what you see is what's called object-oriented programming. So the idea here is this. You're looking at the world and looking at everything as an object. So this bottle of water is an object and it's made up of other objects like the lid and the thing and the little infuser thing in the middle. So in my code, I would first describe each of these pieces and describe not just what their characteristics are or what their attributes are. So like how tall is it, whatnot, but I also discuss any function. So basically the lid might get put on the cup and taken off the cup. And that would be sort of a method. So basically every object would have methods and attributes. So it's actions and it's definition, it's adjectives. So basically verbs and adjectives. So actually the kind of, that's a good way to put it. An object is a noun and in programming, you take that noun and describe its adjectives and verbs. Okay. And then with that, you then can code how all those objects, how all those nouns interact with each other based on how they verb things and how those, how that verbing ends up changing their adjectives. Okay. And that's essentially what, um, object oriented programming is. And then there's all these sort of other ideas like polymorphism and inheritance or basically, you know, um, one way to think about it is that I am my mother's son. So I am a separate object. I'm a, uh, Alec, you can almost think of me as a new type of object and I inherit certain things from my mom. Um, but there's also things that are different. So classes, so objects and classes, which is a definition of a different type of object can inherit from each other. So there might be, so this might be a child of a class called cups. This is one type of cup, but it's not all cups. And this inherits certain qualities from the parent type of cups, but um, has its own unique features. And there's um, all that. And then, but at the end of the day, objects are mutable, which means they can change, okay? Um, I can change the adjectives of this. For example, a child will get taller, uh, a child may get whiter, uh, etc. Those kind of characteristics may change. I may have less hair in the future. So objects are mutable. And the problem is with mutability is that it can get harder to keep track of. Okay, it's very flexible, but so many things are interacting with each other. So many things are changing each other's sort of adjectives that it becomes hard to keep track of where a source of a potential problem may be because you're not quite sure what's going in, what's the input that's generating the output from where, okay? And this is where functional programming comes in. And functional programming is kind of going through a renaissance. I think a lot of it has to do with, partly because of React, because React kind of introduced immutability into a lot of web development. And then that's kind of, it just seems like the idea of immutability has just kind of had a re renaissance recently. But immutability just means you don't change the data. Okay, so I may have some information. So if I have a book, whatever is written in it is ink. So once you read the book, okay, you've gotten information and you might do whatever you do with the information, but the book hasn't changed. Okay, so basically you have a fixed set of data that goes into a function. Okay, so, and that function then spits out a whole new piece of data. So in that case, I might read a book and then I turn out a book report. Okay, and they're two separate things. The book has not changed, but I took in the data and then turned out something else. And that is functional programming. That's what's called a pure function. It doesn't change the input, but it generates output. And the, the benefit of that is since you know that the input hasn't changed, you know that the output should always be the same. So if it's not, if the output from this particular step, this particular function isn't what you expected or didn't work the way you wanted it to, then you know you can kind of isolate the problem, okay? Um, this means you have to create several copies of objects. So for example, if you're programming in React, states are immutable. So essentially what you're doing is you're constantly creating a new state object. Um, you're not necessarily destroying the old state object, um, or at least that's sort of the goal. And um, you are sort of creating sort of a, a snapshots of different, of different states, of different ways that things have worked out. Okay, and, but that old snapshot hasn't necessarily changed. 
So that's so basically, functional programs are all about doing things in an immutable way. So basically, you have data types, but the data you can, you can set the data types. So everything's essentially a const. Okay. So if you wanted to do functional programming in your object-oriented programming language, you could just declare all variables as constants, and you know, welcome to functional programming. Okay. The two other ones I'm a little bit less familiar with, um, or I understand a little bit less. One is logical where basically everything is about creating sort of logical rules. So prologue is sort of the, the primary language. So prologue, what you're doing is you're creating a program, but really you're creating a program to ask questions to. So what you do is you program a bunch of rules, such as the sun comes up in the morning and the moon comes out at night. And then basically I can then ask the question to the programming, like, to the program, um, if the sun is up, is it morning? And then it would be like, yes, because you told me that if the sun is up, it's morning. So you're creating sort of logical axioms or truths into the language. And instead of you telling the language how to come up to a conclusion, it is assessing all the rules that you give it and coming to a conclusion. So basically it's logically deducing what it should do and how it should respond. Okay, so how it could respond might be very unpredictable depending on the level and detail of the logic you give it because there's gonna be so many different sort of logical queries it's gonna run through. Okay, so that's Prologue is sort of the main. And amazingly enough, there are people who actually do web development in Prologue. I thought that was really interesting. Um, and then four is uh, procedural programming. So this is literally just a sequence of things that you should do. So you're not creating any objects. You're, it's literally just do X, then do Y. So when you're doing something like assembly language, that's literally what you're doing. There are no objects. There are no functions. There's no none of these abstractions. You're just literally creating a list of instructions saying, do this first, then do this, then do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. That's procedural. You're literally just creating a list of procedures, sort of allow low level machine code assembly. That's what you're doing. You're just creating a sequence of to do's and then the computer does it. So that's pretty straightforward. Not as easy to do. Um, if you have a program in assembly, it's It looks complicated. I haven't done it, but it looks complicated. So those are sort of the four main different programming paradigms. So different languages are kind of designed to facilitate certain paradigms. So for example, most languages that people are familiar with are object-oriented programming languages, whether you're talking about like Ruby, Python, uh, C++, C Sharp. Um, but functional languages, especially if you're gonna be in the web development space, two of the popular ones are Elixir and Clojure. Those are functional. Um, basically, if I remember right, Clojure is based on Lisp, which is sort of the, the, the OG um, functional language, and Elixir is based on Erlang, another functional language, and but built for sort of a web world kind of application. Another other ones like Elm, I'm pretty sure F Sharp is functional, um, Scala I think is functional. There's a variety of different functional languages. Prolog is sort of the main logical one, and then any kind of assembly is procedural. So my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and alexmercedcoder.work. Have a great day and enjoy.